Hi, welcome to ECTV. I'm Katarina Kim. And I'm Kaylin Flores. In today's episode, we'll be focusing on teenage drug use in Ventura County. We will be discussing the devastating effects drugs have on the brain in day-to-day -day life, while also providing information on drug treatment and prevention with Ventura County Behavioral so Health. What is your role as a counselor to aid students with drug-related problems? My role is to work with the student to find out what is the problem, um, how they um, came to the, the, the situation that they're currently in, work with the um, school resource officer, the assistant principal, um, and the parents to be able to provide that family with some resources to help that student get back on the right track. Especially nowadays when there are so many new drugs on the market, such as Spice, a synthetic strain of marijuana. We are seemingly always a little bit behind the, the people who are creating those substances, mm -hmm. tend to look at it from the standpoint of how can I sell this if it's illegal, but if I can skirt legality by changing the formula, then for a period of time this thing will be available on the market and it can be sold in, in, in a lot of places like liquor stores and smoke shops and, and places where they sell drug paraphernalia. Percentile of that, like the majority, do kids fall under that category, or is uh, it mostly well? There, there matter? is, there is numbers. There are, I'm sorry, there are numbers uh, available, but the numbers are really mitigated by the fact that a lot of people do not make it to an emergency room, do not make it to a place where mm -hmm. these things will be counted. So if we tell you that uh, X amount of kids are using this drug, it's only the numbers we we've, we've tabulated. Anecdotally, we know that from all of the clinics and all the conversations our clinicians are having with each other and the data we're gathering here at Ventura County Alcohol and Drug Programs is we know that there's a substantial number of kids that have tried those drugs and they go in favor and out of favor. To 10 days, all substances should have left your body. That doesn't mean the damage to the brain is not there. Mm -hmm. If you've done some damage to your brain, it could take well, it could take a longer time. I mean, we've yeah. seen that in, in, in uh, addicts of methamphetamine where it could take up to mm -hmm. five years for the brains to get definitely, back to definitely. a form of normalcy. Yeah. This is a very beautiful, strong organ, the brain, but it also, when we subject it to those powerful chemicals, it can damage it profoundly. David Tovar is joining our very own Zion Reza to talk about just that. So why is it so hard to identify? Well, you know, since these are synthetic drugs, mm -hmm. they're constantly being tweaked and changed uh, to evade the law. Mm -hmm. So how do you prevent a drug that you can't always identify? Yeah, by trying to change the social norms around the usage of these drugs. Mm -hmm. So we want to get out there, let people know that these drugs can affect your brain, can affect your well-being, can affect your development. So, so this is K2 Blonde, mm -hmm. and this is Head Trip. What you'll see is both of them say, not for human consumption. Okay. And they'll also say lab certified okay. to contain the following. And the following is the synthetic THC or marijuana. So many of these, you know, they have the different drugs that are in them, but also they say that they're used as aromatics or potpourris. Mm -hmm. uh, some say incense uh, and not uh, mint to smoke or inhale, okay. uh, and that's how kids are getting high with them. Right. So Today we will be focusing on Siana Kalia, a local El Camino High School student. El Camino is an independent study high school dedicated to student-driven education on the Ventura College campus. Now we will be joining Samaya, who is in the studio with Siana. Today I'm here with the intelligent Siana Kalia. We will be discussing how El Camino High School creates effective students. Now, Siana, tell me, how long have you been a student at El Camino High School? I started El Camino when I was in ninth grade, so this is my third year. Like I said, El Camino offers students so many opportunities, ranging from a personalized learning experience to lots of individual attention to Ventura College classes and so much more. In your opinion, what makes an effective student? 
I think an effective student needs to have good skills of organization and also needs to be willing to take on new challenges, to try new things, to go outside their comfort zone, and should not be afraid of hard work and should be ready and willing to take on, uh, to take advantage of opportunities available to them. And what advice would you give to a freshman starting at El Camino? To a freshman starting at El Camino, I would say be aware of the opportunities that are available on campus and know how you can take advantage of them, know how you can become involved on campus, how to meet other people. And if you're struggling, absolutely talk to your teacher because they're there to help you. And also it's important to stay organized, especially in an independent study environment and to take responsibility for your own learning. Now let's switch gears from an El Camino student to an El Camino instructor. Grace will be discussing a new system of history education with El Camino instructor Marsh Peters. Hello and welcome to our segment about the history discussion trials involving El Camino's high school testing curriculum. Yeah. Could you describe the current process that you're using right now? Okay, so instead of um, a textbook, that we're, we're giving kids actual documents from the time. For instance, um, the last discussion we had was about the New Deal. Yeah. Um, and so Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, briefly, it was to use government money, put people back to work, they would build dams, national parks, roads, different things like that. With that money, then they would have money to spend and boost the economy and yeah. get us out of the depression. Um, and so most people think favorably about FDR and, and the New Deal. And yeah. um, so what I did was um, went to a place that had gathered the historical documents together from that time. And um, there were songs, there was actual fireside speech that Roosevelt gave, there was yeah. actual legislation, there were you know, actual historical documents about the things that went on, the lunch programs, the dams, or whatever. And I gave the kids the, the actual documents and I assigned them into groups. This side has to argue that the, that the New Deal was really successful and the other side argued yeah. not successful at all. So it's like On a more ghoulish note, we are joined by local historian and ghost hunter Richard Sennett. Kiana, take it away. Looking more towards the spooky side of life, or lack thereof, I have here with me Ventura's very own ghost hunting extraordinaire, Richard Sennett. We will be getting a glimpse into his life and experiences of hunting ghosts and exploring the paranormal. Mm -hmm. But then I saw one yeah. and it changed my whole fabric, mm -hmm. my whole point of view. I was doing archaeology one night back in 1979 mm -hmm. and I went into the courtyard of the old mission about 1230 mm -hmm. and saw a monk, which didn't scare me because monks lived there. I thought, oh, a brother is up. So I went to talk to him. He disappeared. That's cool. He vanished in front of my eyes. And I was sitting there with my mouth open. What happened? And then it dawned on me that this was a ghost. Mm -hmm. The next morning, I talked to the monks who lived there, and they said that a ghost figure had been seen by them. And that's what started me out. People ask, when did I become a ghost hunter? About 30 seconds after I, I heard about this. And from that day on, in the summer of 1978, I have been hunting ghosts. Thank you, Mr. Sennett, for spending your valuable and spooky time with us today. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching. Hi, welcome to ECTV. I'm Grace Johnston Glick. And I'm Zion Reza. This episode, we will be focusing on the artistic side of Ventura County. Mm. Do, you, do you work at any schools or? Well, I am, I like to say that I am the art department at El Camino High School. That may be a little broad, but really it's a, you know, as you know, it's mm -hmm. a uh, small independent study high school. Mm -hmm. And right now that is my only recurring school gig, which is again, once it's once a week and then the students do the bulk of the, of the work on their own. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing it for, um, I would say over five years now. Oh, over five years. Wow. And what my favorite, uh, my favorite thing about the job yeah. is the story of that I was invited because I was, I was painting, well, I, I did a project with El Camino High School when it was still on the campus of um, Pacific High School mm. way back in the day. And so I knew about El Camino. And okay. then also when I was teaching at Ventura College, mm -hmm. I would get El Camino students in my class. Okay. A yeah. lot. When I, I was teaching mural painting and like drawing classes. And, mm -hmm. and the school knew that I was there and I was very open mm -hmm. 
I like El Camino high school students yeah. in my classes. Coming up next, we have Gabriela DeLillo with Dave Seidler to talk about his passion for a project he and his club are working on. The project's goal is to make toys for the children in time for the holidays. Now to Gabriella. Hello, I'm here with Dave Seidler from the Conejo Valley Woodworkers Association. Dave's participating in a toy making operation to bring handmade toys to needy children across the county. Hello Dave, it's so nice to meet you. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get interested in woodworking? Well, my interest in woodworking started out in junior high school. I took a woodworking class and I just loved it. Really? Uh, even though I didn't think of it as a vocation, it was more of a hobby. Um, I at that time decided that it would really be cool to someday be able to build my own house and every piece of furniture in it. And I thought that that would be a very That's lofty goal to try, but I decided to try and go for it anyway. Uh, I went to college to be a dentist uh, in after, after high school, and I hated it. I did <laughs> three years of pre-dental and hated every, every day. <laughs> and so, so I dropped out of school and I joined the Navy wow. and spent some time in the military and had a time to think about what I really wanted to do with my life. And I decided that I really liked woodworking and maybe I should pursue a career in that. That is so awesome. And you said, I was talking to you earlier, you said that you also build guitars and you build, actually, can you show us some examples? Oh right yeah, here? I have some examples of some of the toys that, that we're making this year. Look at that. Uh, we have large cars and the younger children like the large cars and then we have small cars and the older children like the, the smaller cars. And then we have to do something for the girls so we have some little jewelry boxes that are made so the girls have something as well. That's so awesome. And there are actually lots of different right things. Oh yeah, please. And what exactly is each one made out of? What type of wood? Uh, these are made out of, the cars are made out of redwood. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular jewelry box is made from oak. Um, yeah. The oak box has been finished. The redwood box or the redwood cars are unfinished and mm -hmm. that's so that children can color them themselves. They can design yeah, them. Yeah, and so it's not stained. So decorate they can do whatever, they, can they, do want whatever they want with them. Yep. That's so awesome. And what is your favorite out of all woods? types of wood to work with? I love the exotic woods. Uh, I love rosewood. I love bakote. I love koa. I love the real figured grains, burls. What's, what's the easiest to work with in your opinion? Well, the easiest wood is, is not always the best looking. Redwood yeah, is, true, is, true, is, true, and pine are very easy to work with, um, but they're kind of bland. You have to stain them yeah. and color them differently. What an inspirational project to help children in need. Adding to the various kinds of creativity available in Ventura County, Brendan Elliott, a local independent filmmaker, is hard at work setting up his production company. Here with the scoop, including Brendan's work, Ethan Messaker and Brendan will be discussing the film world. We are here today with writer and director Brendan Elliott of Bad Penny Productions. We'll be talking with him about the challenges and advantages of being an indie filmmaker in this day and age. Hi, Brendan. How you doing, Ethan? So what was the first film that inspired you? Actually, the first thing that inspired me to uh, become a filmmaker was the tram ride at uh, Universal Studios. There used to be a break in the ride where they would stop at the bottom of the hill and let you walk through one of their sets. And in that, they would show you different special effects techniques. Uh, then you would get back on the tram and continue with your ride. Once I saw all of the different ways that they were doing things, the way they, the way, the way they different movies were being made. That's really what set me in the direction that I wanted to go in. Thank you for joining us at ECTV. We hope to see you soon.